the spring of 1931, the tiny town of Mansfield, Texas was rocked by a heinous crime. Noah Peck, once a respected citizen of nearby Terrell, shot and killed his wife Christina while she made his lunch. It was the last meal she had ever planned to make for her husband. She was leaving him on that very day. She never got the chance. After committing the evil deed, Mr. Peck took his own life. The couple's bodies would only be discovered a full day later, leaving the city of just over 600 people horrified. But Mrs. Peck's story might not have ended that fateful day. In the nearly 100 years since, stories have been told of a ghostly woman walking the streets of historic downtown and peering out the windows of the shops she used to frequent. Our own past paranormal investigations have stumbled upon an answer of who this woman might be. Have men mistreated you in the past? Did you have a husband? Is this Mrs. Peck? Ask it again. Can you confirm? Is this Mrs. Peck? Is that you, Mrs. Mrs. Peck? Is that you? Turn the flashlight off, Mrs. Peck. Holy crap! And so our team set up in a notoriously haunted downtown business, once the offices of the Mansfield newspaper, now a charming candy shop, to see if we could come face to face with Mrs. Peck. We need to find out if she is the one who is haunting all of these buildings. We've had evidence before, we've had some amazing encounters, and we have some really cool things tonight to check and see if it's her and if Mrs. Peck is the primary haunting of historic downtown Mansfield. Um, we're kids in candy shops tonight. Uh, this is what we love doing, and we're literally in a candy shop. We started with a spirit box session, a device that cycles through frequencies at rapid speed. The investigator wears headphones and says whatever they think they hear, free from audio contamination. Key details on the case were withheld from the investigators to avoid mental biasing. With no details, the investigator began to hear things through the spirit box that correlated to the case perfectly. She was about to divorce you, I know. Don't you open that door. Safe door. Butter. Kevin, what did you say? What did you just say? Butter. Are you kidding me? I just heard butter. RJ, bring out some other stuff. Bring out some other stuff. Uh, he's been saying things. I thought I heard divorcing. You're staying. Oh gosh. Is that what you told her? Is it in one? Is that where you were going? It's hell. After the session, we got together and I explained exactly why what Kevin had just heard was so remarkable. So, um, it sounded like you were hearing them fight. She was cooking him lunch and she had called a car to leave. She was leaving him. She was divorcing him. They had been fighting about it for months, apparently. She was found dead, at least over a day later, still clutching a stick of butter in her hand. Also, in a note found after the murder-suicide, Mr. Peck wrote, life for five years has been hell, making this... It's hell all the more compelling. Next, we pulled out a REM pod, which detects motion, and to our shock, it began to go off. Are you gonna open the door for us? Then our SLS camera, which detects and tracks human figures, alerted us that there was something standing in the room right next to the REM pod. Little something for both of you and everyone. I'm terrified of doors. Hey, You're Tim. All suffering here. Yeah. Tim, come here. I don't like that you said, Tim, come here. 
Like I'm supposed to stay here. Like I'm supposed to stay here. What? No. Get it. Wait, wait, wait. Is it seeing? Might be seeing that. It, it could be catching. Kevin, uh, oh, oh, yeah. At first, we thought it might be tracking one of the shelves, but it did not do the same thing with any other shelf. It's not getting that cabinet. And when we returned to the same location later in the night, nothing appeared on the camera. You know, it's weird. You know that I was getting that figure uh -huh. next to you? Uh -huh. And I thought, me and Tim both thought it was just this black cabinet. I'm not getting it at all now. While recording that figure, the same camera picked up two distinct sounds. A little, little lower. Here. Why is it doing that? Because something is trying to touch it. And it's not, but it's not like going off like it's something. Hey, go over there and touch it all the way for us. It's like something just kind of getting. I'm looking so consistently right there, but. Something just rustled that candy. What? Something just rustled that. That wasn't you? That was not me. Something just rustled that candy. I didn't touch it. No. I, I wasn't even didn't. next to it. You weren't close to it. Hey, did you just touch that candy? Set this thing off. You do. What sounded like someone rustling through the bags of candy could distinctly be heard, even though yeah. none of us were that close to the shelves. Doing that. Then we brought out one last thing the official death certificate of Christina Peck. And what followed gave us chills. Does it bother you that I'm coming close? Um, does this bother you? Does this bother you that I'm coming close right now? I'm not. Is this your death certificate? This is your death certificate right here? Christina? Is this your death certificate? I didn't even know which one I was pointing at and it's hers. Is this your death certificate? With that, we wrapped up the night. As for what we found, it's up to each person to decide if it's proof of the paranormal or random coincidence. One thing is for certain, some tales are so tragic, they reverberate through the centuries. And if you listen close enough, you may just be able to hear them told to you by those who were there. You're staying.